Yo, 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 this is Toby with Online Security. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Once again, we're going to be continuing this series with the Cert Master Labs for Security Plus 701. All right, if you have been liking this series so far, please do me a big, big favor and smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend, and leave a comment if there's something that you want to see. All right, now this lab right here is probably going to be one of my favorite ones so far. We're using Nmap to discover open ports. Okay, open ports. All right, if you're not familiar with what a port is and why we use them, I'm gonna give you a very quick example, but I highly recommend that you sign up for our Security Fundamentals Academy to learn all these fundamentals in other use case scenarios. So a port, simply put, is a, it can be an entryway into a service or a server over a network, right? So. When we're over here, when you type in olinesecurity.com, your computer is in or your your network, your router is interacting with Oline's web server. Right? The reason you're able to get to our website, the reason you're able to look at the web pages and all the classes is because we have a port open, port four four three, probably more than likely, open on that web server for you to access that system. All right, there's a port open there, right? So what we're gonna be doing is scanning different servers, different systems for open ports. Why do we care about open ports? Because a port can be an attack service. It can be a, a way an attacker enters your network, right? A way an attack or, or something an attacker can use to compromise you. Any type of vulnerability can be an attack surface for these attackers, right? If you have an open port, let's say port 445, right? And I'm on your network and I create some type of malware that uses that open port to replicate itself onto other servers on your network. In other words, I, you have this network of systems right here and you all have port 445 open and I create some type of malware that goes from this system to this system to this system and, and does stuff on each system because you have that port open. Well, this, this attack surface needs to be closed. You're gonna close it or you're gonna make sure people have some type of authentication framework to get from system to system. You're gonna do something. So that's why we care about port scans so we can identify those vulnerabilities, identify ports that are open that don't need to be. All right, so let's jump into it y'all. So first things first, we're gonna log into this box. This is our Kali box. Don't forget you can't use the shortcuts on Kali, right? We can't use the text shortcuts over here. So username root. Password P capital P A dollar sign dollar sign W zero R D. Okay, once this is open, we're just gonna start using MF. MF is one of my favorite tools when it comes to pen testing. It, it's uh, as we've said several times now, it's a port scanner. We're gonna use it to scan for open ports. You can do more than port scan with MF. You can actually use it to do some vulnerability scans, right, with the right plugins. Uh, the way you can set your port scans uh, can can be a little fun too. All right, so let's open up this terminal right here. And don't forget, we can't copy and paste over here in Cali. All right, so the terminal is open. The first thing we're gonna do is scan this network. All right, we're gonna scan this IP address. I'll explain what it's doing in a second. Let's just type it in for now. So nmap, we're gonna start the nmap command and we want nmap to scan this target 203.0.113.1. We're doing a fast scan. So this is only gonna scan a, uh, 50 to 100 ports. I'm not, I can't remember exactly how much, but I think it's gonna scan just 100 open ports on this system. We're gonna do this stealth scan, the SS. You really don't need it because by default, nmap is running that, but we're just gonna put it there because we also want MMAP to, if it finds a port that's open, tell us, try to tell us what service is running on that port. So if this web server has port 80 open, can MMAP tell us what program is running on that port? What program, what service is using port 80? So that's what the SV is gonna be for. Then the dash O, we want MMAP to try to tell us the operating system information. If it knows what operating system, if it's a Windows or Linux, then dash PN. We're telling nmap not to ping the system before the scan. Uh-oh, what happened? Oh man, I gotta type that over. All right, hold on, nmap 203.0.113.1-f-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-s-
that's V version operating system don't ping and there's a special way you can save files or output your results on nmap is with this dash o n there's also a dash o x dash o g the different file formats or you could do dash o a but we're just going to save it with the dash o n that means nmap readable it's an nmap format i mean you really don't need this you can just save it as a regular file but we're just going to stick to the instructions so we're just going to hit enter so nmap is going to go ahead and do its thing actually i'm going to start this over and I'm gonna throw uh, verbosity on it so we can see what it's doing because it might take a while. I'm just gonna add some Vs on there so we can see what MMAP is doing. All right, so right now MMAP is just doing some scans. It's loading up its scripts at our target, All right? You can see it's doing that stealth scan that we just talked about, the SS scan, All right? SS right here. It's trying to do a stealthy. What that means is, you know, when you're doing a TCP three-way handshake, there's three flags. You're going to send a sin flag. They're going to respond back with a sin act flag. And then we resp uh, respond back with an act flag. Well, with this SS scan, this stealth scan, we're only sending sin packets, All right? We're not going to respond back with the act packet. We're just going to send another sin packet. All right. So that's what this is doing. It's supposed to be stealthy. We're not completing that connection. All right. So we found some ports that are open. Let's see, it's only one port open over here, port 25. All right, it shows you the port number. It's using 25. You see the state is open. The service, that's SMTP. That's what we use to send mail. All right, and if you're not familiar with SMTP and all the ports and protocols, I highly recommend that you register for that Security Fundamentals program because we dive into that in way more detail. So let's go to the next step. So here they want us to grab, they want us to find the word open in that file that we saved. All right, so that's just gonna look for the open port. So we're gonna grab open the file that we saved, border scan.nmap, that's the file that we stored this output to, right? That's one of the reasons you would store output to a file so you can grab, remember grab, we're using that to find stuff. We can just find the word open in that file instead of getting all of that information. So here we go. Right, what's open port 25 it's using SMTP well ports are discovered as being open on this target that's gonna be 25 we're gonna score that all right now we're gonna look for the operating system information all right so we're gonna grab OS out of that file all right the operating system information is free BSD all right we're gonna score that boom go on to the next one all right, so we're gonna do the same thing over here, but we're gonna switch the network that we're on, right? We're gonna switch this ethernet connection, right? To make more sense of that, I just want you to type in ifconfig real quick and take a note of your IP address. It's 203.0.113.66. Okay, so we're gonna switch our ethernet connections. We're gonna switch it to VGuest. All right, we're going to do the same thing on that system. We're going to scan that network, scan the system on that network for threat vectors, attack vectors, right? Open ports that we can use to compromise. But before we got to, we got to go to resources, switch this ETH to guess. All right, now we're back over here. Let's go back to the instructions. We got to refresh our connection over here. We're going to do that with the DH. DH, uh, DH client command. All right, so this command is gonna refresh our connection, right? It's gonna give us, a, uh, well, pretty much refresh, refresh that connection that we just switched, right? With updated IP information. All right, so we're gonna communicate with the new DHCP server. So if you don't know what all of that means, when you first connect to a network, right? Let's say this is us. We have to get an IP address for that network. When you turn your devices on at your home network, you got to talk to your DHCP server, which is built into your router. You got to ask it for an IP address, right? So that's what we're doing right now. We're asking this new DHCP server for an IP address. 
So if we type in ifconfig again, we see a new IP address, right? Because we, we're on a new ethernet connection. All right, cool. So we're going to do the same thing we did last time. All right, we, let's score that and make sure it registers that new information. And we're going to run this same command, but on this IP address. So I'm not going to type everything in again. I'm just going to hit the up key a few times. Find that last command I ran. Hit control A to get to the front of the line. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, right? If you want to, you could just hit the left key to get all the way to the front. Doesn't matter. But you're going to change this IP. All right, this is the IP we're going to scan now and we're going to give it a new file name. It's going to be guest. I'm going to hit control E to get to the end of the to the end of the line. You don't have to, you can just keep hitting that right key if you want to. And we're going to run this. I'm going to turn verbosity off this time. Now this scan right here, it's going to take a while. All right, this one takes a while. So let me see. I don't think I remember what was opened on it. Yeah, this scan is going to take a while. Um, it's kind of blowing me right now. Yeah, so what, what I'll do is we'll cut this part of the video out. And once this is done, we'll continue. That we're back. So that didn't take as long as I expected it to take, but it, it took long enough. So scan results are done. Next thing we're going to do is grep for open ports instead of looking through that entire file or trying to scroll up and read and everything. We're going to hit enter right here, right? Grep, open, guest scan, and map. What ports? We got a few ports open. We got open sense on 8,443, that is open. So what is the name of the service found on several open ports? There we go, I can't spell. Cool, now we're gonna grep for the operating system. We got FreeBSD again. Score that. All right, sweet. We're gonna do the same thing. We're going to scan another network switch our ethernet again we're going to scan a different network to see what its attack surface has to show so we're going to switch this to vlan clients all right same thing we're going to refresh our connection i'm going to hit Control r and start typing in that command that i wrote and it should show me i'm just going to hit enter all right, control R shows you previously typed commands if you just start typing it in and then hit enter and then it runs it for you. You don't have to do that. You can just retype it entirely if you want to. I didn't feel like it. All right, so we're gonna do the same command again. Let's see what we're gonna name this file though. It's a new IP address, a new file name server. It's the file name server scan. And a new IP. and run it All right, so this says it might take up to two minutes it might not but we'll see how long this takes so what are we doing, right? We're doing port scans against different systems on different networks. We're trying to identify open ports, if there are any ports to be open, right? If those ports are open, they can be used to compromise that system or network, right? We can use that open port and create some type of payload that abuses that open port. Right now, you're probably thinking, 
Well, you said O-Line Security's web server has a port open. Yes, certain ports are going to be open. We're gonna have certain ports open because they're necessary for certain services to work. But just because a port is open doesn't mean it's automatically going to be a vulnerable service. No, right? Because we can encrypt that open port. Establishing encryption on that open port allows that data to remain confidential. You can also implement some type of authentication, right? But if you don't need that port open, then you're going to close it. Right? But if you do need the port open, right, keep the port open, but make sure you have the right security controls around it to support that open open connection. All right. So what services are discovered to be accessible? Here are the ports right here. I mean, we could do a grab, but it's right here in front of us. I don't see NTP. NTP uses 123. I don't see FTP. FTP uses 20 or 21. I see HTTP on 80. I don't see RDP, I don't think. RDP uses 33, 89. I see SNTP, that's 25. MSR PC, 135. Microsoft DS 445 SQL is NFS here. I don't hold on. Let me see. I see IMAP. I'm not seeing NFS. Let's make sure I'm not tripping. I see SMTP, HTTP, RPC. Uh huh. I'm at Microsoft DS, SNTP, Mount D. All right, yeah, I do see it. Mount D, MySQL, ACTP. All right, cool. I don't see RDP. All right, RDP is not there. NTP is not there. FTP is not there. All right, operating system. Let's grep for that. Grep OS server dash. Okay. This is using Microsoft Windows Server, right? It had to be a Windows Server because it's using 445, right? It has SMB running. All right, so next, what is a threat vector? A threat vector, a pathway that can support an intrusion attempt? Yes, right? It is a pathway that can support an intrusion attempt, right? It can be used to compromise a system or a network or to exploit a system or network. What is an attack surface? A list, the listing of a port? No. Simply having the ports listed out does not make it an attack surface. Uh, it's the collection of exposed vulnerabilities. What MAP parameter option performs a scan which dis displays service identification as SV? It's gonna show you the service, I mean the version that, that the service is using. Where can threats originate? Everywhere. What are two primary response options to the discovery in an open port hosting an insecure service? Well, close it if we can. Uh, we're not gonna require more complex passwords, apply for, and enable encryption, right? We're gonna enable encryption, right? 443, right? Uh, O-Line Security has 443 open. Right, that web server has 443 open, but the data going to you and back to online security's web server is encrypted. It's using port 443. Right, HTTPS is a secure port. Why? Because it's it's being encrypted. So encryption is definitely a key thing. We want to make sure that that if it's an open port, that the service is being encrypted. That's probably the most important. Right, if if you don't need that insecure service, close it. Right, we want to close it. But if it is insecure. We need to encrypt it, meaning create some certificates, public private keys, right? So we can use that good old asymmetric and symmetric encryption, right? And if you're not familiar with that, register for the O-Line Security Fundamentals Academy. We're gonna go over everything there, but that is it for this lab, y'all. Go ahead and grade it, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.